Howdy, everybody. Welcome back to Accounting 1101. I'm Professor Martin. If you've been following along our past couple of videos, you know we've covered a lot of background information about why accounting is important, about who needs accounting information. And we're finally to the point where we're going to start talking about transactions, how to get transactions into our accounting system via journal entries and posting to the ledger and that kind of thing. But before we get to that point, I want to do a quick video and show you how transactions impact our accounting equation. So let's jump right in. If you've been following along, you already know we have an accounting equation. Very important concept in accounting. As a matter of fact, we have an entire financial statement that revolves around that accounting equation, don't we? It's called the balance sheet. And we know already that our accounting equation and our balance sheet is going to show asset equals liabilities plus owner's equity. And to put that into non-accounting terms, I'll give you a few layman's terms for it. Assets, simply stuff a business owns. That is going to be equal to who has a claim to that stuff. That can be two different groups of people. It can be a creditor, they can have a claim to the assets via a liability, or it could be the owners of the company. That can be the equity part. So assets equals liabilities plus equity. Right now, we're going to take a look at how transactions impact that accounting equation. Now, keep in mind, we don't record transactions directly onto the accounting equation like I just showed you. We do it through a journal, which we'll learn about in the next video. But I want to show you, it's important to understand how transactions are going to impact that accounting equation. But first, just a reminder, what exactly is a transaction? I keep throwing that word out there. A transaction is simply any business activity or event that is going to have an impact on that business's financial information. So you think about like when we invest into the business, when we buy land, when we buy supplies, when we sell a product or a service, when we pay our expenses, when we pay back money that is owed. All of those are examples of transactions. That's not an exhaustive list. Obviously, there are other transactions. That just gives you an idea. Now, what you need to keep in mind, every transaction, every single transaction that happens is going to have an impact on the accounting equation. That's why we're here right now is to figure out how transactions might impact the accounting equation. I'll give you a few examples. So our example business that we're going to be using throughout the book is Printing Plus. It is a service company basically set up to do print jobs for customers. It is owned by Lynn Sanders and founded by Lynn Sanders. So here we go. We're going to see a few basic transactions and walk you through how they impact our accounting equation. Transaction number one, Sanders, our owner and founder of the business, is going to invest 20000 into the business and gets shares of common stock. So the fact that she is getting shares of common stock ought to be a giveaway that we're dealing with a company, a corporation here. When we're looking at transactions and we're analyzing them, what we want to try to do is figure out what accounts are in play and whether or not those accounts are going up or down. So, if you're taking a look here, let me get my pen going. There we go. 20000 is coming into the business. So cash is coming into the door. And for that cash, the business is going to give the investor shares of common stock. So we got two accounts in play here. We have a cash account. We have a common stock account. Cash is an asset account, something the business owns. Common stock is an equity account. Common stock is basically evidence of ownership in that business. So 20000 coming in. Our cash account is going to go up 20000 Now, if you're a good accounting student, you probably remember, we have an equation here. Equations have to balance, don't they? One side equals the other side. So 20,000 going up on the asset side, we have 20,000 going up on the equity side. 
Assets equals liabilities plus equity. Our equation balances 20,000 on both sides. You also hopefully recall that transactions have two parts. They involve at least a minimum two different accounts. Here we have a cash account and a common stock account. All right. So that's how that particular transaction will affect our accounting equation. Assets are going to go up. Equity is going to go up. Let's take a look at another one. Number two, we buy equipment on account for $3,500. Payment is due within 30 days. So first of all, again, we're trying to figure out what accounts are in play. We see we got an equipment account. Equipment is an asset account, something the business owns that they can use to generate revenue. So we have equipment right there. We have something called on account. What does that mean? When we buy something on account, when we see on account, that means that payment is happening later. Whether we buy something or we allow someone else credit to buy something from us. When we buy something on credit, it's called an account payable. The key word there is, see it right there, payable. Anytime you see payable, that means our business owes someone money. In this case, we owe the vendor who we bought the equipment from. So we have a liability here. When a business buys something on account and we owe money, it's called a payable. In this case, accounts payable. Buy now, pay later. So our equipment is going to go up 3,500. We have equipment that we didn't have before. The equipment account goes up. We owe money for the purchase of that equipment. So the amount we owe, the payable, goes up 3,500 again. Our asset side is equal to liabilities and equity. 3,500 goes up on that side. 3,500 goes up on that side. All right, number three. Moving right along here. We got 4,000 in cash for services not yet rendered. Hmm, right away we should be able to see if cash is coming in the door, that cash account has to go up. What about the fact that we did services not yet rendered? Customer comes in, they give us money, but we haven't done anything for them. It's like a down payment. We're going to do the work later on. That creates a liability called unearned revenue. Unearned revenue is when we take a customer's money, but we haven't provided them with a good or a service. Liability. We owe that customer. We either need to provide the service, give them the product, or give them their money back. We're liable to them. So you see under liabilities, we have unearned revenue. We took 4000 in cash, and now we have a liability to that customer, 4000 bucks. You've seen unearned revenue before. If you've ever bought a gift card for like Starbucks or Taco Bell, that's unearned revenue. You gave them money. They haven't really given you anything yet. They don't earn that revenue until you actually go back and get the food. And they provide that food to you. So you've seen that before. Unearned revenue. 4000 cash goes up. Our liability for unearned revenue goes up. Again, the equation stays in balance. That side has gone up. The asset side, the liabilities plus equity side has gone up as well. How about another example? Number four here. Provided 5500 and services to a customer on account. So we did work. We provided 5,500 in service to a customer. They didn't pay us right away. We didn't get cash. It says on account, meaning they're going to pay later. When we do work for a customer or provide a customer with a product and allow them to pay later, we have a receivable, accounts receivable. Anytime you see that word receivable, that means we're expecting to get money. All right, we are expecting to receive money at some point. Payable, we owe somebody some money that we're gonna to have to pay, receivable, somebody owes us money that we expect to receive. So AR, account receivable, when a business sells something on credit, customer buys now, they pay later. It's an asset. We expect to get that money at some point, the customer owes us money, we are entitled to that money. So that account receivable is going to go up 5,500. Over here, we've done the work. 
We've already provided the service or delivered the good, so we're going to count revenue. Revenue, if you recall, is a part of equity. When we have revenue, equity goes up via an account called retained earnings. Okay? So revenue increases the equity account of retained earnings. So there we go. Asset side is going up, 5,500. Revenue going up 5,500, increasing our equity in the business. How about another one? Transaction number five. Paid a $300 utility bill. The electric bill comes, 300 bucks, we pay it. Cash is going out the door because we paid. And then we got this whole utility bill thing going on here, right? Cash goes down, 300. So our assets are going down. Our equity is also going down 300 because of that utility expense. Again, expenses are a component of the account called retained earnings, right? So retained earnings is a part of equity. When we have revenue, retained earnings goes up. When we have expenses, retained earnings goes down. Those revenue and expense accounts flow into retained earnings. We'll talk about that in a later video when we talk about closing entries. One more transaction I want to walk through with you. Number six, we paid dividends, $100 worth of dividends to the stockholder. Now, when a company pays dividends, it's simply giving profits back to the shareholders. It's not really an expense. Not revenue, it's not an expense. It's a separate thing. So we have a separate account for it called dividends. Dividends are going to reduce our retained earnings because we're taking profits and giving them back to the shareholders. In this case, $100 worth. Our cash account goes down $100, so our assets go down $100. And our equity goes down $100 because we're taking profits, giving them back to the shareholders. Now, every time we've made a transaction, gang, our accounting equation is stayed in balance. You'll notice that, you know, one account on the asset side goes up or down, and then we have an account on the liability or equity side that goes up or down in correspondence to that. So we've been in balance every transaction. We take all the transactions and put them together. You'll notice we are still in balance. What I have here is simply listing out every transaction that I walked through, one through six, and just all in one place. And you'll notice on the asset side, we add them all up, we get 32,600. On the liabilities and equity side, we take them all together, we get 32,600. So every transaction, the point that I'm trying to make, every transaction that happens is going to have some kind of an impact on the accounting equation. And every transaction is going to leave the accounting equation in balance. It's perfect accounting harmony. It's holistic, all right? Everything is a perfect circle in accounting. It works out so great. Our next video, we're going to talk about how to put transactions into a journal because what I just showed you, that's not the way it works in the real, the real world. You know, people aren't really plugging transactions plus and minus into the accounting equation. I was just showing you the impact how transactions impact the accounting equation. So what we're gonna do next, we're going to take transactions and record them in a journal. That's what really happens in the real world. It's taken, what, 10 videos, but we're finally up to real world accounting. I'm excited for that. Hope to see you back here to share that with you. If you have any questions about your homework or anything that you've read, anything that you've uh, encountered in the video, hey, Look me up. I'd be happy to help. Feel free to drop me a line and we'll walk you through whatever accounting conundrum that you have encountered. Until next time, take care, everybody.